Leave everybody. I think one of my favorite Christian writers, he's a Protestant, but wow, is he talented and gifted. He just died this year is Frederick Beekner. And Beekner, as a Protestant, kind of gets into the Lent thing. And he gives us some advice on what perhaps we can do for Lent. Beekner says that just as Jesus spent 40 days in the desert to meditate on his purpose for being, to solidify his me, me, mission, that that's exactly one of the things that we should do during Lent. Spend these 40 days reflecting on who we are, on our purpose for being, meditating on our mission in life. What a good Lenten exercise, eh? Bingner says, to help our reflection on who we are in our Lenten message of what are we about, Bingner says we can ask ourselves the following questions. When you look at your face in the mirror, what do you see in it that you like the most? And what do you see in it that you dislike? He's not talking about physical attributes. When we look at our face in the mirror, what do we see in it that we most like? And what do we see in it that we most dislike? Who are you? Who am I? Good question, isn't it? Here's another question Beekner says we could ask ourselves during our Lenten journey. If you had only one last message to leave to the handful of people who are most important to you, what would it be in 25 words or less? It's a good one, isn't it? If you had only one last message to leave to the handful of people you are, who are most important to you, what would it be in 25 words or less? That's good. Here's another one Beekner says for Lent. Of all the things you've done in your life, which is the one you would most like to undo? Of all the things you've done in your life, which is the one you would most like to undo? And then he says, of all the things you've done in your life, which is the one that makes you the happiest to remember? Of all the things you've done in your life, which one makes you the happiest to remember? Boy, these are good questions. Thought about them all week especially for Lent, our 40-day journey of reflecting on who we are. And using today's gospel, that means we are going to go up a mountain. On top of a mountain, that's where great theophanies happen. That's where great revelation of God happens, to go up onto the top of the mountain with Jesus. You see all the big questions in life, all of our big questions, that's where they'll be answered, in the presence of Jesus, the one through whom we were created, the one who knows us more than ourselves, the one who marvels at us, and the one who has marvelous plans for us. Up on top of that mountain, in the presence of Jesus, that's where our good news will be found. It's a great scripture reading. Peter, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his three closest apostles. They go up on Mount Tabor. He was transfigured. His face shone like the sun. His clothes turned to a dazzling white. And then all of a sudden, Moses and Elijah show up, and they start talking to Jesus. You see, that's where their good news is going to be found, too, even Moses and Elijah, because he's the fulfillment of everything they preached and did where good news will be found. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Jesus. 
That's where we go to get our Lenten questions answered about our life, where we've been, where we're going. What is Steve Roberts' individual good news? You know what I love about this reading the most is Peter's response. Peter says, Lord, it is good that we are here. Now Jesus is quick to call Peter out every time he's wrong, and he's wrong several times in the gospel, but Jesus doesn't call Peter out here. Why? Because he's right. It's good that they were there gazing upon Christ to find out their good news. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. It's good they were there. <clears throat> so in the context of Lent and the perspective of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, this passage tonight emphasizes prayer. It will be so good to go there. Just a couple practical things prayer maybe first is the issue of time everybody I have read bar none everyone says we need to spend at least a minimum at least 15 minutes a day in prayer just us and Jesus minimum 15 minimum that's just a good start so let's strive during Lent Spend 15 to 30 minutes a day with our Lord every day, focusing upon him, gazing upon him, conversing with him, listening to Jesus. Prayer. St. Teresa of Avila, a doctor of the church, primarily because of her teaching on prayer, defines prayer this way. Prayer is nothing else than an intimate friendship a frequent heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him by whom we know we are loved. Isn't that beautiful? 15 to 30 minutes a day just having a heart-to-heart -heart with Jesus. Just open up. Say whatever is on your mind. He's your friend. It's safe there. I've left a handout in the narthex. Uh, you can pick one up if you would like when you leave. It's called How to Have a Conversation with Jesus. And I've used this handout hundreds and hundreds of times to facilitate my talk with our Lord. You may find it helpful too. This handout, not this one particularly, but this is an old handout. I don't know exactly what the history is, but it has been reprinted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. The author is unknown, but I think the wisdom in this handout, how to have a conversation with Jesus, is timeless. This is how it starts. You do not have to be clever to please me. All you have to do is to want to love me. Just speak to me as you would to anyone with whom you are very fond. Nice, isn't it? Here's from another section. Are you afraid of anything? What are your worries? Have you any tormenting, unreasonable fears? Trust yourself to me. I am here. I see everything. I will not leave. Give it a try. You may find it helpful. This is my favorite part because we're talking about, uh, you know, a lot of time we're talking, we're praying for people. Is there anyone you want to pray for? Say their names to me and ask of me as much as you like. I am generous and know all their needs, but I want you to show your love for them and for me by trusting me to do what I know is best. Isn't that nice? how to have a conversation with Jesus, you may find it helpful. Many prayers at first, we're good at speaking, but we have a hard time listening or picking up what Jesus is saying back. That's normal. It takes us a while to develop that spiritual sense to become attuned to the whispering voice of the Good Shepherd. So you may want to start out with praying scripture. 
Read a section of the gospel and let that be Jesus' voice. That's what he's speaking to you personally. And as Jesus speaks to you through his written word, how does that apply to you right now, this moment? That's Jesus speaking to you to now. Remember, it's a conversation. Try paying, praying that way because you get that voice of Jesus in the written word. We have adult education tomorrow, and we'll be doing, uh, after the 9 o'clock mass, there'll be a, a, a talk just on how to pray with Scripture called Lexio Divina. Brothers and sisters, you know the only real way to mess up prayer? The only way to mess this up is not to pray at all. I'll end with another Lenten question that Beekner suggested. If today, if today were the, was the last day of your life, what would you do with it? I love that question. If today was the last day of your life, what would you do with it? Take that one to Jesus. Gaze upon him. Converse with him. Listen to him. That's where your good news and my good news will be found. It's God's beloved son with whom he's well pleased. Listen to him.